Hey y'all, it's Coach Suho with Greater Richmond Fit for Kids here on this Teacher Tutorial Tuesday to talk to you about uh, boom cards. We're just going to go over some boom cards in general. In fact, what I did was today I went through, um, videotaped myself playing around with some of the different features and boom cards to kind of give you a sense of what there is available. Uh, the video is long enough that this is going to be part one of a two-parter. Tune in next week for part two, um, but let's go check out and see what there is to find in part one. What we're going to do is we're going to just take a look at making a deck, see what it looks like, see all the some of the different features that are in there. So we'll just click on a new deck, and here we are. This is our basic layout. So in here is where you can do pretty much most of the stuff that people do on Boom Learning. Um, so over on this side, on the left side, you can see that we have text. If you click and drag this over, it adds a text box. And then you can type whatever you want into it. Of course, if you want to change fonts and things, they're up here. Whereas sizing, you can adjust that there. Um, and then there's some other features, bolding, strike through, different uh, orientations, alignments, things like that. Um, here we can change the color of the font. I think it's kind of neat that they allow you to change individual um, letters in the font. Um, a little spell check feature in here. You can change the background color of your font. Ooh, that doesn't quite look right. Um, there we go. Yeah, so um, you can also use text box to be answer choices. So you can mark this as correct. Um, so it has that green border around it. However, the kids don't see that green border, of course. Now, if you want to duplicate things, you can click on what you want to duplicate, and you can click duplicate over here on this red, uh, red, on this right side. This right side houses a lot of different features that you can use to kind of align things and arrange things how you want. I personally like this positioning tool because it moves things one little spot at a time. Plus, you can double click in there, <clears throat> kind of highlights it, and you can type in a position that you want and it'll drop it there. So sometimes if I want to position a couple things on a bunch of slides the same, then I'll go ahead and use this to kind of guide where things are lined up. You can also click on size and rotate. This will change the size of the box. By changing the size of the box can also determine kind of the formatting. So if it's, you just saw when the width was too narrow, it'll automatically drop it down to a second line. Um, this I don't play around with a little bit when it comes to answer choices. Of course, if you want things centered up, you would click on it and you would click the center here. Um, other things to point out, I do like this a lot, using this center because it automatically will center it horizontally or if you want it vertically, it'll center it vertically on your card. Um, if you click on them, it will collapse them or expand them. So if it's getting too long, you can click on one. The align tool. Here, let's duplicate this. And, oops, it's the wrong box. So we'll mark that one as wrong. So we have these two answer choices. I'll click on one. You can sh hold down the shift key and click on the other one. That'll select both. And then we can align them different ways. We can align them. Oh, we didn't want to align them horizontally. To undo things, you can uh, in Windows you can do a Control Z, <clears throat> or you can click on Undo or Redo up here. So if I liked that, 
to redo it, undo it. Um, maybe we want to align them vertically. So when we do that, it basically sets them in the same position uh, or, uh, across the page. You could also use these to center them. Notice that when we center them vertically, they end up on top of each other. So we want to undo that. But we can center them horizontally. That is not an issue. Since I have multiple boxes, we can resize multiple boxes at the same time if they're selected. Um, let's see, what else can we... Z order. So Z order is helpful um, because it tells how deep something is on the page. So if I want something to show up on top of these boxes or I want these boxes to show up on top of something else, then I can play around with the Z order. If you bring it to the front, that means that these boxes would be in front of anything else that I put on the page. We'll have to um, experiment with that a little bit when I add some more things here. Hey, y'all. I just wanted to pop in here to tell you that we played around with the Z order later on and couldn't seem to get it to work. So if you know how to get it to work, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to pick your brain. So you can make things more transparent or you can make them more opaque. <laughs> uh, I don't play around with that too much. Uh, border. So I know right now it looks like they have a border, but that's just be to show us which one's the correct answer and which one's the wrong answer. But border will essentially put a border around your box. And you can choose its color, you can choose its width, you can choose all sorts of things. So I've added a green border around these um, and you can change the style. It can be uh, flat, or sorry, flat, it can be solid, it can be dashed, it can be dotted, um, just adds a little bit of a flare to it. The radius will round your corners. So you'll notice here that they are rounding. Um, if we bump up the width, then it really becomes apparent. The outside edge of that is rounded. The more we round it, the more it'll round the entire thing. So if I just want the outside edge rounded, then I would want to be somewhere in here. But the more I cut down on this radius, the more it will just round that entire thing. So now it's almost like a, a long oval. Um, again, you can experiment with different border styles. Um, you can also, so a couple different ways you can get rid of your border. <clears throat> you can set it for transparent. Um, you can also just bring the width down to zero, and there will be no border. All right, uh, I see that these are out of alignment, so we're going to center them up. So that is the background, and then text properties. You can vertically center your text in the text box. It's a nice little touch. <laughs> so that's a basic rundown of the text box, but most of these options over here on the right are going to apply to pretty much anything that you put in. So... Uh, oh, the one thing I didn't go over was the drag and drop options. So if you make something draggable, that just means that when the student, notice it got rid of the answer option, um, that just means that the student can move it around. So if I go into preview mode, that means that I can click and drag it. Um, and this would be a little bit more apparent if... Um, you give it a border or you give directions for the students to click and drag your answer into the right spot. Uh, I have a separate video on draggable items and drop boxes if you want to know a little bit more about that. Um, since I don't want these to be draggable, I'll highlight both of them. Again, shift click to highlight multiple. And then I'll click on the clear button here. And now they're no longer draggable. I can make that the wrong answer, add the correct answer. Now, I've been editing this on the template card. What that means is, is that whatever I do on the template card is going to show up on all the cards. So if I keep adding cards, it's going to have the wrong box and the correct box. Now, with that in mind, I... Oops. 
with that in mind, I am going to go ahead and drag these into a different location. Usually I like to have my question at the top, answer choices at the bottom. Sometimes they'll be off to the side. So the positioning, we're going to center that up horizontally, and then I can play around with how much space is between them. Perfect. So again, because I did this on the template card, it happens on all the other cards. Um, let's add something else to the template card. Let's add an image. So when you go to add an image, you click and drag it over, and that'll bring up your images. Now, these are backgrounds that I have created in PowerPoint and uploaded. I would like instead to put in some shapes. So I click on my shapes, and it has added a shape for me. Now you can resize these by clicking on the corners and resizing them. Now this shape, it seems like, oh, it's not working. But this is actually how I designed the shape, was for it to have a space around it. Um, so I could upload, uh, let's just duplicate this. So I duplicate it, I get the exact same thing. Now if I double click on it, I can upload a different one. Um, let's duplicate that and double click. So again, these shapes are designed to be like this, to not fill up the entire space. If I wanted one that takes up the entire space or close to the entire space, then I would pick this one. Again, double click and I can change things. So now, I want to align these. I don't really like how they're aligned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one and then shift, hold down shift and click on the other ones. I'm going to do the um, align tab because if I do my center tab, if I do horizontal, they're going to stack on top of each other. So I'm going to undo that. So if I do vertical, it's just going to move them down the page, which again, that's not exactly what I want. What I do want is I want them to be in line. Um, I want their tops to be in line. So if I click on this, you're going to notice they'll adjust slightly. So now they're all in line with the first one that I clicked on. Now, <clears throat> so the other thing that I can do here, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Sometimes I find that it helps for me to kind of click through things to see if what I did was correct. Um, and honestly, that's a great way to learn the program. It's just to kind of play around with it for a day. Um, watching these videos is helpful, but it's also helpful when you get in and start doing stuff. Um, the other thing that I might want to do is I might want to play around with their positioning this way. <clears throat> This positioning will allow me to kind of fine tune things. So this one is at, let's make it at 50. And then this one, let's do, let's see what 250 looks like. And then this one, we should make it 450. So this should align them with the same space between. It's just some basic math that I used there. Now, of course, they're not quite centered on the page. So what I'm going to do is this. I'll click on this one. I'll center that. I'll look and see what its positions are. So that's at the left side is at 265. So here, let's make this 465. And instead of 50, we'll put that up to 65. So using a little bit of math um, and understanding how the program works, should help you to align things exactly how you want them. So here we have some shapes. Again, to change them, double click, change the color of them. Oops, I've double clicked too many times. And again, since we did this on the template, it's on all the cards. Now, just because it's on all the cards doesn't mean you cannot change the other cards. So now I'm on card one. I can double click on this and maybe I want it to be purple. And I can double click on this and 
Maybe I want them all to be purple. Let's change this one to blue. So changing them, not an issue. You just double click on them, scroll to what you want, and change away. There we go. Then when you go to preview, you'll have your shapes. And then when I um, mouse over these boxes, or if I was, um, yeah, if I mouse over these boxes, you'll notice an outline shows up. You can turn that outline on or off. It's nice to have it on because then the students know that's what they should be clicking on. These, when I scroll over them, mouse over them, there is no outline. So that kind of gives them a hint that these are things they should click on. Now, this one we marked as wrong, so when they click on it, it should give them a whoops. Whoops! Yep. So let's click on the correct box. Now, since there are only since there's only one correct answer, it's going to advance the slide. So one correct answer advances the slide. If we have multiple answers, let's say that. Let's add a new card. We're going to change this to a correct answer as well. Now, when we preview this one, we have multiple correct answers. So notice they'll have to click Submit. So I click on that. If I click Submit, whoops, it's not 100% correct because there are two correct answers. So you have to make sure that they select both to click Submit and get it right. All right, so that's images, that's text boxes. Again, a lot of the stuff you can handle over here. So like... I wanted to add a background to this. I can throw in a background. It'll fill in the spot that I have as transparent. If I want it to be transparent, I keep it transparent. The reason I like it as transparent is because it allows other things behind it to show through. Hey guys, I'm back again. I just wanted to tell you that we're gonna pause here. <laughs> pause, like, like can't pause. Anyways, we're gonna pause here if you wanna know more about boom cards check in next week because we're gonna have a part two to this and who knows we might even have a part three anyways thanks for checking things out hope to see you soon bye